Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today, let's continue to talk about how to find the domain of function. This time, we are going to deal with a quotient of two square roots. As you can see that we have a fraction here of two square roots. And so how do we find the domain for this function? We actually need to consider the two square roots separately, okay? One thing that we can do is actually that we can rewrite the function as a product. So we can actually write it as the square root of uh, 2x minus 5 and then times 1 over the square root of 4 minus x. The reason for writing it this way is that we can actually find the domain for each piece right here and then actually put the two domain together and then we can actually figure out the domain for this function. Okay, so let's actually get started. So first, we are going to find the domain for the square root of 2x minus 5. So we are going to do this. So for the square root of uh, 2x minus 5, what we can do is that we can actually just um, set the stuff inside the square root to be greater than or equal to zero because we require that to be um, a real value function, right? So that means we have the 2x minus 5, which is the stuff inside the square root to be positive or zero, okay? And then so that we don't get an uh, imaginary number. So now when we have 2x minus 5, we can solve this inequality so that we can see uh, what x must be greater than or equal to, okay? So we can move the phi over and then we are going to get 2x greater than or equal to 5. And then we divide both sides by 2. Then we are going to get x is greater than or equal to 5 over 2. And so now we know that x must be greater than or equal to 5 over 2 in order for the square root to be real. Okay. And then now, what about the other one? The other one, we actually can also use the same idea. We can use, um, we can look at the stuff inside the square root and then set it to be greater than zero. And then you may say, what about equal to zero? Now, this is the thing that we need to pay attention to. Um, since this square root is in the denominator, we do not really allow this four minus x to be zero. Otherwise we'll be dividing by zero so that the function will be undefined at that, um, <clears throat> at when, uh, this 4 minus x is 0, okay? So right now, when we consider this, we are actually considering the uh, 1 over the square root of 4 minus x. So we are not just considering the square root of 4 minus x, we are actually considering the uh, 1 over the square root of 4 minus x. And so in this case, we actually need to make an adjustment here. So instead of the usual 4 minus x greater than or equal to 0, we only put down 4 minus x greater than 0. Yeah, so that's the difference between the two. And then now we still get to solve this inequality. So we are going to just um, stop manipulating this. Uh, we can subtract 4 from both sides. So we are going to get negative x greater than negative 4. Okay, and then we are going to divide both sides by the negative one so that we can isolate the x. So we are going to get x is less than positive four. And so as you can see here, we actually need to switch the inequality symbol because we're dividing both sides by a negative number. And so now we actually get the domain for uh, each piece. And then now we need to think about how to put them together. Okay, so the way that we are putting them together is that we are going to just put that on the lumber line. So we are going to now just make the lumber line right here. This is actually our x-axis. Okay, and then we can put down the phi over two and then the four. Phi over two is 2.5, right? So we can actually just put phi over two right here. And then we have the four. So we have the four here. And then so now let's actually graph this. So if we are graphing this on the lumber line, then we are going to make a solid dot at the phi over two, it's really because there is an equal sign. So we're including phi over two. So we have phi over two right here and it's greater than the phi over two, right? So we actually need to take all the numbers on the right side of the phi over two. So we can actually just take all the numbers on this side. And then what about this one? This one is x less than four. So we are going to put a open circle at the four. The reason for why we are putting the open circle is really because we are not having the equal sign here. We are not including the four. So four is not uh, to be included in the domain for our function. It's really because if you try to put in the four here, four minus four, you actually get zero and you are dividing by zero. So that will be a problem. So we do not include the four. Okay, so we are going to just have all the stuff 
on the left side of the four. And when you are graphing this, I would suggest that you graph it all the way to the end of the lumber line because sometimes when you graph it like really short, you actually cannot tell where the overlapping region is because in order for you to find the domain for this function, you actually need to see where they overlap because the values that the x values that you plug in will actually <clears throat> must satisfy both inequalities, not just one of them. So that's why we need to see where they overlap. And so in this case, coming back to this right here, we can actually see where they overlap, which is actually just all this. Just doing that here. And then you may say, what about this open circle here? Because there is no point included in here. So we cannot really say that the four uh, can be included because the four cannot be included from as you can see from this inequality. So right now what we do is that we can actually do the shading on the lumma line so that we can actually write down the domain in the interval in notation. So right now because the uh, phi over 2 can be included, okay, so we can just put a solid dot right here on the phi over 2 and then we can just take everything between phi over 2 and 4. Then you may say, what about this one? Then of course we are not including the four. So we're going to put an open circle right here. And then now based on our graph right here, we can actually write down the domain. So the domain for the function, okay. What is the final answer? We are going to just based on the graphing and then we can write it. Solid dot means that we get to include the phi over two. So we get to use brackets, right? So we get phi over two, then comma, and then we go all the way to four. So we just put the four here. And then because we're not including the four, so we got to use parentheses. And so that is the domain for the function. Okay, so that's it for this problem. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and share my videos to others. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.